Greetings, dear families, moms, dads, children, extended family members who may be taking in this virtual prayer service, a mark of the times in which we are living, but also a reminder that the Word of God will not be suppressed, that we may need to use different means, creative means to get the Word out, but we will proclaim God's Word and proclaim the mercy of Jesus. Whether you are viewing this on Friday, late afternoon, evening, or Saturday morning, just before coming to church for First Reconciliation, in any event, you are literally, I presume, watching this from the comfort of your own home. And it's wonderful that home is meant to be a place where we feel we can be ourselves and be relaxed. But I do want to say that as you're taking in this service, um, I wouldn't recommend like lounging on a sofa. You know, our posture when we come to church is an indication of our readiness, our alertness. And I know, dear children, that with the help of your parents and teachers, you've been preparing for this most significant moment in your sacramental journey, in your life as a Catholic. And so we want to do what we can, even if we can't be physically present for this service, to show the Lord, I am ready. I want to be open to this encounter with you, dear Jesus, and to experience in a most particular way the abundance of your mercy. I'm going to say just a brief word before we start the service itself about the flow when you come on Saturday. The first and most important thing is, as Jesus would be here to guide us every step of the way in doing the good thing, the right thing, so there will be many people here at church to guide you as you arrive at your particular time, as you enter the church through the, uh, what we call the elevator entrance by the portico and make your way up the stairs. You will be guided to one of four confessor priests, Father Rich, myself, and we'll be joined by Father Ron Torek of St. Agnes in Orville, and Father Vince Hawk from St. Peter in Loudonville, and they've come and helped us before. And, and they will be also very kind voices on behalf of the mercy of Jesus. I do want further to encourage, we've tried to time things so that in addition to your son or daughter, you who have been preparing for your first reconciliation, receiving the sacrament, that your family members would also take that opportunity once again to experience the abundant mercy of the Lord. Again, we are here to help, to guide. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people and have mercy on us, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom should I fear? The Lord is my life and my refuge, when he calls I hear. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people and have mercy on us, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Grace and mercy abound in the Lord. Let us pray as God calls us to conversion. We ask him for the grace of sincere turning of our hearts to him. Lord, send your Spirit among us to cleanse us in the waters of repentance. May he make of us a living sacrifice by his life-giving power, we may, that we may praise your glory and proclaim your loving compassion. We ask all this through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. Amen. We turn to the Word of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus addressed this parable to them. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance." The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise. You, Lord Jesus Christ. Tell me when it's enough. I have to believe, dear friends, that all of us have had some experience where someone said something along those lines. Maybe someone was serving us part of a festive meal at the holiday was bringing around the, the bowl of mashed potatoes or something and said, I'm going to serve you and let me know when there's enough. And on a feast day like that, it's like, I, I have a big appetite, you know. So a big portion is set on the plate. Or uh, we have a, a, an itch somewhere that we can't reach and uh, a trusted adult says, well, I, I'll, I'll scratch it for you and now tell me when it's enough. In that case, because they want to alleviate the itching, uh, they don't necessarily want to leave a permanent mark, okay, where the itch was. So I'm going to pause for a moment, and I want to invite you, those of you who are gathered, taking in this prayer service at home, to think of a time when you were directed, now tell me when it's enough. My dear families, when it comes to the Lord and His effort to heal us, to bring us back into right relation, when we have, by sin, separated ourselves from His love, from His presence, and we could ask, well, when has the Lord done enough for us? Or is there a point where the Lord could have said, I've done enough, I'm not going to do any more? So in that parable of the one sheep that gets lost, first of all, we might ask ourselves, well, is it by accident? Is it like finding myself in the store aisle and I thought mom or dad was right next to me and suddenly I turn and they're gone, and now I'm lost. Well, that's an accident. Or can a sheep kind of knowingly wander off? Can we somewhat knowingly wander off the path of goodness into sin? Yes. What if the shepherd just said, well, um, that lost sheep, I'm not leaving the 99, I'll, I'll ring a bell. Hopefully, it'll recognize the bell and choose to come back. That's enough. Or what if Jesus said in that parable, the, the shepherd will, will call out a few times to try to gain the attention, to try to locate where that lost sheep may be. But again, maybe take a few steps, but say, you know, you're the one who wandered. You come to me. My dear families, God was not finished doing what 
he willed to do to bring us home, to bring us to healing until he had sent his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to save us. And Jesus did a lot during his lifetime. He taught, he worked miracles, he healed people, he forgave the sins. Was that enough? Tell me, is that enough? Evidently not, because Jesus took on the cross, was crucified, died, and was buried. Praise God, he rose again. And you know what the first instructions, basically, that he gives to his disciples when he shows himself to them in all his risen glory? He doesn't say, you know, I've certainly done enough by now. You're on your own. No. He breathes his spirit on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you hold bound are held bound. Dear friends, the clergy, the priests have a very serious responsibility in our ministry of reconciliation. We are bound to extend that mercy to you. So when it comes time for our part, as you prepare to come to church to receive the sacrament for the first time, and as your families receive it again, let's try not to come with an attitude. Well, yeah, I know I, I, I hit my sister or I said something nasty to mom when she asked me to do my chores, but I said I'm sorry. Isn't that enough? If I'm ready to ask, well, isn't that enough when there's a whole lot more I can offer? Let's remember Jesus and all that he did to heal us and to forgive us. Amen. At this time, dear families, I will lead us in an examination of conscience. It is a narrative that is placed, of course, in terms understandable to young minds and hearts. But all of us, all of us are called to engage regularly in such an examination of conscience. The first commandment, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. Have I wanted more things? Have I made other things more important than God? Have I made an idol of sports or entertainment figures? You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Do I use God's name carelessly? Do I use God's name in anger or when I'm upset? Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. Did I attend Mass on Sunday, at least by watching the live stream? Did my behavior make it difficult or impossible for my parents to do the good thing we were being called to do? Have I remembered to pray daily? Honor your father and mother. Do I obey my parents? Have I done my chores without complaining? Do I do my chores without always having to be reminded? Have I been disrespectful to teachers, coaches, or others in authority? The fifth commandment, you shall not kill. 
Do I keep my patience or do I lose my temper? Do I hold grudges or even try to get even with others? Have I been unfair or unkind to others, including those who are different than I am? The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Do I show respect for my body? Do I respect the bodies of others? You, the, the seventh commandment, you shall not steal. Have I taken something that belongs to someone else? Have I forgotten to return something I borrowed? With the money that I do have, have I been generous? The Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Do I play fairly or do I ever cheat at school or games? Have I been honest or have I lied? Have I hurt someone by what I have said or done? Have I copied someone else's work instead of doing my own? The ninth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Have I been jealous of the friends or things that someone else has? Have I tried to be kind to others? The Tenth Commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. Have I nagged my parents into buying things that I see my friends have? Have I helped others when they needed help, whether they actually asked me for help or I could see they needed help? Let us pray. O oh Lord, as our children and our families make their way to this beautiful church to receive the wonderful sacrament of reconciliation for the first time. Put their minds at ease, even as you stir up in their hearts your Holy Spirit, who inspires us to turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. May all who participate in the sacrament this weekend truly experience an encounter with your son Jesus, who is our Lord, our Savior, our brother, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness. Loving and forgiving are you.